Good morning, and thank you for joining us for our next session of LAMPCAST. My name is Scott Likens, and I'm the Artistic and Executive Director of the Lakes Area Music Festival. Our LAMPCAST series is made possible by the voters of Minnesota through a grant from the Five Wings Arts Council, thanks to a legislative appropriation from the Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund. Today's LAMPCAST is titled Musical Roots, and it relates to the themes on our Rain and Red Clay performance coming up Wednesday, August 11th. That program is sponsored in part by Ameriprise Financial and Brainerd Noon Rotary. And if you're tuning in live, we ask you to uh, enter your questions in the chat function or the comments on Facebook, and we'll get to those after the opening presentation. And now uh, join me in welcoming uh, today's host and LAMP music director, Christian Reif. Hi, Scott. Hi, everyone. Um, Thank you so much for joining. Um, this is very exciting. Uh, I'm usually not the host of such Zoom calls, so this is uh, all new to me and it is exciting. So um, yes, we are talking about uh, the Rain and Red Clay Chamber Concert on Wednesday, August 11th, 7.30 at the Tornstrom Auditorium. And um, I thought instead of um, giving you a presentation like I did last year also with Taylor a few times, um, I wanted you to meet some of the musicians that are uh, performing on this concert and get them on a more, get to know them on a more personal level. So it's my absolute pleasure to introduce you to the violinist Eunice Kim and the horn player Adedeji Ogonfolo and clarinetist Anton Rist. Hi, everyone. Hey. <laughs> Excellent. So we're gonna, <clears throat> we're gonna talk, as I said, kind of about them in person and also about what chamber music, what role chamber music is or holds in our lives as uh, musicians in general, but also as orchestra musicians, every one of them is a, uh, a brilliant, wonderful orchestra musician. And um, the chamber music is such an important role, I think, of what we're doing as well. The listening, the, the playing together, knowing which, which role you're playing and so forth. And uh, I, just, I just wanted to um, maybe Eunice start um, just telling us a little bit about yourself. I know we've, we've played um, together several times at the Lakes area and also with St. Paul Chamber Orchestra. Um, so what have you been up to? And uh, yeah, just take it away. Yeah, hi, uh, so nice to see everyone again. This will be my third summer at the Lakes area music festival. Um, originally from San Francisco, California and uh, I am in the St. Paul Chamber Orchestra. This will be, I think my fifth season coming up. Um, yeah, this has been a weird 16 months. Actually, I was just in a uh, Vail, Colorado, and just played for my first uh, in-person <laughs> concert. So that was last week, and it was just incredible. And right. Um, right now, I am currently in South Dakota at a chamber music festival. So it's uh, just amazing to have life kind of go back to normal again. <laughs> Yeah, that's true. No, it's it's gonna be so much fun to see you again uh, in Brainerd and make music together. Yeah. Anton, where are you right now? Hi everyone. So I am currently in New York City, where I grew up, where I went to school, where I work. Um, I'm starting in the fall of my sixth season as principal clarinet in the Met Opera. Um, although I'm not sure if I should count the last year, so maybe I'll just say it's <laughs> season. <laughs> um, and yeah, this is this will be my first summer. Um, in Lakes area, and I'm really excited. I know a lot of friends who play at the festival and they, they love it. My wife has played there before, um, but this is my first time. And I'm really excited to, to meet you all in person and Christian to see you again. Yes. Yeah, this last year has been, as Eunice mentioned, kind of crazy. It's sort of just been a, a struggle to stay motivated and positive and find as many ways that I can remain engaged in what I love to do and trying to engage an audience or even just um, other musicians finding ways to connect with them. So that's been that's been exciting. There's been a lot of um, a lot of struggle, but also some some positive silver linings that have turned out to be really enjoyable and special. Like what, for instance? Uh, so um, a lot of live stream concerts yeah. which is that I never thought I would do, and I was always very intimidated by people who would do them even before the pandemic and sort of put themselves out there. 
uh, so I started very carefully, you know, played some adagios maybe, and then gradually over the year worked it up. So I actually was um, feeling more comfortable just engaging that in that overall. It's still very stressful in a totally different way from performing a live concert. So I, I haven't quite gotten over that part, but mm -hmm. yeah, it's definitely put me out there in ways, in ways that I, that I wasn't before. <laughs> So that, right. that's yeah. a silver lining. <laughs> nice. Well, it's been it's been so many years since we last saw each other. That, uh, so we, we both studied at Juilliard and uh, made music there together many times. Um, but so it's, it'll be so nice to see you in Brainerd and uh, yeah, make music there. Uh, Adetiji, you've been you've been uh, kind of a Lakes Area Music Festival staple, and I think every I mean definitely every summer I've been that you you've uh, played. So it's, it's going to be nice to <laughs> to see you again. How how many times have you played there actually? Uh, well, this is going to be my sixth summer. Uh, if we last, or if the world didn't you know crumble and implode on itself last year, it would have <laughs> this would have been my seventh. Yeah. Um, been going since two thousand and fourteen. So amazing. So cool. And you're in, are you in uh, California right now? Yeah, I'm in Los Angeles um, and stuff is starting to pick up again. Um, uh, I'm in the Pacific Symphony. I'm second horn with uh, the Pacific Symphony. Um, we've been doing, Anton mentioned webcast. Uh, we've been doing um, concerts, uh, recorded concerts in the concert hall that have been released on Facebook and YouTube. And that's been since February. Um, but I also do uh, a lot of um, recording work. So studio uh, work like movies. Um, I just did a really, I mean, I signed an NDA, so I can't say who it was with, but uh, let's just say like the person walked into the room and I like started freaking out. Um, so I do a lot of, anyway, I do a lot of recording work anyway. Um, so it hasn't been that intimidating for me, but it, it has been weird, especially yeah. when you're playing um, orchestral works and you're expecting there to be an audience but life is somewhat returning to normal knock on wood that this like delta variant or whatever other variants don't make everything go back to the way they were a year ago um but yeah i'm just i'm just so excited to and i never thought i would say this because i really do like living in la um and but just being here i've been here since september in 2019 and um I never thought I'd say this, but I cannot wait to get out of California. <laughs> so, <laughs> but it's it's real. I mean, I, uh, Julia, my wife, and I, um, we, um, we spent yeah most of the the year and and a half in Munich, uh, where we're based now, <clears throat> and obviously I love it there. It's great. It's beautiful, and and we we can go on hikes. You know, it's just very close. Um, the Alps and. Uh, so it's it's wonderful to be there, but I also I missed the. Sometimes I just missed that feeling of going from one place to another and and traveling and seeing other people and making music uh, along the way. And um, now I, I'm sure. I mean, now I'm I'm in the states for almost three three months, so I'm sure at some point I'm like I want to go home again. <laughs> but it's it's nice to be, uh, yeah, to make music again, to be able to do that. Um, I want to talk about the, the role of chamber music. I mean, this is this is the the kind of focus anyway on this uh, um, on this lampcast and especially for this concert. Um, I, I'm a I'm a pianist myself. That was my kind of main um, main instrument. But I also play clarinet. Um, so for me, chamber music was one some of the first interactions. Some of the first wonderful mem memories I've had making music because um, I'm I was never the I was never the kind of soloist. Um, I've played with orchestras um, as a soloist, but I, I never, that's not my passion. I always wanted to make music with people. So, uh, um, and not being in an orchestra yet, maybe um, in as a teenager, um, uh, chamber music was the, the, the great love that I've had. Um, also, yeah. So I just, I, I wanted to ask you what, uh, are these, are these same experiences that you've had? Um, what is chamber music for you and what the role in your life? Who wants to, who wants to start? I could, sure. I could start. Or I, yeah, I I'm sorry. start. Go ahead, you, you have the camera right now. So. <laughs> um, so yeah, chamber music for me, it's kind of, it's like the essence of what we do. It has <clears throat> all the elements that go into every musical performance, whether you're playing a solo piece or you're playing a Wagner opera, it's all there. It has 
Um, but it, it breaks it down to such a, a clear way <clears throat> because you're so close to each other, smaller group, you can very clearly hear, oh, okay, you're accompanying, you're listening, you're leading. Whereas when you play in a larger group in an orchestra, that can get obscured very quickly, <laughs> especially maybe if you're playing in groups that not everyone is listening the same way, not everyone is viewing it and approaching it the same way, that can get obscured really quickly and it just becomes kind of a jumbled mess. But all the elements are still there. You just have to listen 20 feet away or 30 mm-hmm. feet away. Or in my case, you have to listen 20 feet up and then 30 feet back to the singer and, and try to hope that you're following them in that way. Mm-hmm. Um, and I mentioned the Wagner opera because despite the size, I've had so many experiences playing a huge opera <clears throat> and it's so, it's so delicate in a way because you have to listen so much farther away. So you have to play, <clears throat> oh, excuse me. You have to play <clears throat> in a different way and really be listening. So I think it, it all comes down, it all comes down to those elements. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Adedigi. Well, well, as a horn player, this is a kind of sticky, tricky question, just because, you know, there's not very much, and well, also, also for Anton, just like in terms of like, I guess we have, um, we kind of double dip because we play in brass quintets and we play in woodwind quintets, but even the canon with both of those uh, combinations um, of chamber music groups, there's just not that much literature. And, you know, me personally, especially with regard to like woodwind quintet repertoire, it's like a lot of Rika, a lot of Donzi, you know, you do the Mozart piano quintet, you do the Beethoven piano quintet, and that's kind of, okay, great. Um, so that's part of why, and well, and also since I've left school, um, I rarely get to do chamber music. And actually, if I'm thinking about it, I, I'm pretty sure the only, t- really the only times except one um, time I did this chamber music festival in Michigan ages ago um, when I left school, like all the chamber music that I've done since school has been at Lakes area. Um, so that's, and I'm actually like, I'm particularly excited about playing, um, the Valerie Coleman because it's by a living composer. It's idiomatically, it's very different than, um, all of those composers and all of the, all of that music that I mentioned before. And it's just, it, it, it's just something new and fresh. And I, in my personal opinion, I just think the way she, uh, puts everything together, you know, my mom's side of the family, I grew up going to Phoenix City, Alabama for Christmas. Um, I'm really familiar <laughs> with that area of the country. Um, and I, like, you can, you can hear the cornbread, you can hear the nightclub, mm-hmm. like it's just, it, 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 there's the way she writes it. It's so, like you, you, you visualize all of those things, um, especially if you're familiar with that part of the country as yeah. a man. Yeah. Um, for me, like I, I'm just like really looking forward to play, playing this particular piece. Yeah, no, I, I've, I've listened to it on, on repeat. So it's such an incredible piece. It, yeah. It's the title, uh, Red Clay and Mississippi Delta. Uh, yeah. Do you briefly, I mean, while we're already at the, the uh, kind of talking about the piece, um, do you want to talk about that, that title maybe? Or, or it's the, I mean, the, the way she, I, I understood how she wrote about it is very interesting. It, she, she has all these orchestral techniques that she wrote, writes in and then um, and infuses them with the, or, or has this Southern accent, she says, or the bluesiness of it all yeah. infuses that. And so it's very much, as you said, uh, it, 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 you listen to it and you, you smell and taste cornbread. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, and, I should also say, as an aside, if you hear like whimpering or hissing or barking, I've got a dog and a cat, so sorry if they disrupt us. Oh um, no, they're, they're welcome to join. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, like I said, so I, I grew up going um, to Phoenix City a lot. My mom was born in Macon, Georgia. My grandmother on my mom's side was raised on a pecan farm. Um, and just like the red clay um, part of the title, like I immediately, like you know how there are kind of like seminal moments in your life, like where like a smell, like you can, you transport yourself to that place, to that time, to, you know, a certain event. Um, And the red clay, like 
I not without even like seeing it or smelling it, just like seeing it in the title, I mm -hmm. automatically thought about like going to my grandparents and just like the soil, the terrain, that's what it's like. Yeah. Um, so, mm -hmm. you know, and like, like I said, just like, she just does such a good job of, you know, visually representing um, like that region, that area of the country um, yeah. in music. Um, but there's just so, again, idiomatically, there's so much, like you can kind of hear the accent in the music. Yeah. Like, and there are very many regional accents in the South. Like not everyone sounds the same, obviously, right. but it just, it, it's hard to describe like how she does it. <laughs> yeah. But it, I, I, like you said, I've listened to that, the piece on loop, part, partly because it's really a difficult piece, <laughs> you know, yeah. it's only oh. five or six minutes, depending on how um, it's fast. It's incredibly I, virtuoso. Virtual yeah. Music. yeah. But, you know, it, I, yeah, I'm just, I'm so excited to play it. Sorry. Oh, oh, I'm so excited to hear it. And, and yeah, it's, it's, it's a great piece of music. So you can um, you can actually listen to a recording as well um, in the audience um, uh, from the Imani Winds that Valerie Coleman was part of the or is no was part of the Imani Winds and yeah. was and and wrote it for them and um, yeah it's a brilliant recording and also just I mean incredible playing and um, I can't wait for you all to hear it in Brainerd and uh, just briefly um, uh, uh, talk about the the woodwind quintet I mean this is it. It's called a woodwind quintet, and that's kind of the genre, right? What? Wh why is there a horn? You are not a woodwind player. <laughs> well, why do you think yeah. that? That uh, explain I why mean, do you think the horn, the horn is so suited? Yeah, the horn is. You know, it's commonly known as you know the chameleon of the orchestra. You very often hear. Um, composers pair the horn with the woodwind, woodwind section, the brass section, a lot of times with the string section, you listen to like, you know, just off the top of my head, like Brahms symphonies, there's so many um, uh, themes or uh, melodies where the horn is playing with the celli, like it just, there's something about the resonance um, and the register of the instrument that it, it just really okay. suited to play yeah. in very many different, and it just, I, I I see that in the, all the time in like the recording work I do. I mean, we're just yeah. like all over the place and we're expected to be able to yeah. play with everybody and do anything just in terms of sound, color, timbre, et cetera. So, and blending, blending as yeah. well. But at the same time, it's such a, it's such a solistic instrument uh, in many, many, uh, many, many pieces, but it also, it's, it's such a warm and, and um, harmony instrument as well. And, and in the, in the woodwind quintet where every, you know, uh, all five members are so, if everyone has something to say and it's not like one um, solo line and then the rest is uh, just a compendment. Um, so I'm, anyway, I'm so excited to hear you play it. And uh, yeah, Eunice, um, talking about also four members that are equal in terms of, of, of a, a conversation. I mean, you talked about the string quartet, right? Uh, of, yeah. of um, four intelligent people having a conversation with each other and uh that's very much uh in a string quartet is kind of the staple of uh of western classical chamber music so um anyway just uh talk a little bit about your experience of um playing chamber music what the role for you is yeah uh well chamber music is really what made me fall so deeply in love with music um you know as a kid i was just kind of like in a practice room by myself doing, doing what violinists do, just going through our drills and playing our solos. And then the time came where I got to actually work and interact with musicians uh, who approached music in a different way or with a different view, bringing new ideas. And um, that just broadens your understanding and brings new inspiration to music. And I find chamber music to be such an act of human communication and connection. Um, and also just listening is, is such an important skill, you know, get, getting mm -hmm. yourself out of your own little world and uh, requiring you to listen uh, expansively and to hear the totality beyond your own part. It's so important. Um, yeah. And I'm in chamber orchestra, so there's only around 25 of us and it's a very intimate group of people. Um, and I just think rehearsing chamber music in its ideal form is a process without hierarchy and it allows so much space for each musical 
personality to shine. And I think it's also taught a lot of us some serious social skills. <laughs> <laughs> no, of course. I mean, it's, it's, I mean, that's the interesting part of, of course, um, uh, translating that to, to orchestra playing, because um, I think orchestra playing is chamber music just with more people. Yeah. Um, the only reason why you have a conductor there um, for, for the big pieces is because there are just so many people and, and um, sometimes it helps, especially if you don't have weeks to prepare, um, it helps to have someone to kind of guide the, the arc, the overarching yeah. narrative of the piece. Um, but, but I agree with you that I think that it's so important uh, playing chamber music and viewing your orchestral um, playing with the same intensity and with the same clarity as well, because uh, we have to know exactly what our role is every, right? Uh, I mean, when you're playing in the orchestra, you know, you have to know, are you the melody right now? Are you the counter melody? Are you the bass line? Are you the, um, the harmony? And um, it changes, it's more, it's very flexible. It's never for one piece, it's just one thing. Um, so knowing that, and then um, being able to also connect with your fellow musicians, as you said, social skills, um, kind of, it's very, uh, and and at, the, at that point also in an orchestra, I mean, you will never be best friends with anyone, with everyone, sorry, with everyone, but but musically, on a musical level, on an emotional level, it doesn't matter whether you're um, you're friends in real life, I say, but you you connect in this deep, deep emotional way, um, and uh, it's such a yeah, it's such a beautiful experience. And I think yeah, the, the chamber music experience I think is for all of us um, crucial in our way of thinking about music and thinking about orchestral playing as well. So yeah, thank you for that. And the um, shall we talk a little bit about the the Brahms? The yes. um, I mean, I, I, my my um, my brother is a violinist, um, and he's he's a concertmaster of the Bayerische Rundfunk in Munich. And uh, but growing up, we've always played German music. I, I mean yeah always from from the i mean from when we were six and seven eight years old um, um he was just starting violin and playing these uh the, just the open strings and i was kind of doing something on the piano so it was, it was very hilarious but i do remember playing the brahms uh, sonatas especially the second one a lot so they're very very close to my heart and the the first sonata is just such a it's such a gem and um i, I mean he he wrote it um what, 1878, uh, 79 in, in Pörtschach at the Wörthersee, um, which um, it's, it's a beautiful, he had a um, composing hut there and it's a beautiful area um, in Austria. And uh, anyway, but the, 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 this, this sonata um, that has a nickname, um, it's called uh, the Regen, Regen Sonate, uh, Rain. So that, that's part of our title in this concert, right? Um, and the, the reason why it uh, has this nickname is because Brahms infused uh, motivic ideas and thematic material from um, two of his songs called Regenlied, Rain Song, and Nachklang. Um, and they're, they're absolutely beautiful. And, and when you listen to them, you, you hear those, especially the, the yon ba ba, that just that uh, upbeat. Um, of the first and also third movement, um, it's verbatim that, and it's kind of, it has this whole feeling um, very, it's a very calm, actually, calm beginning, and, uh, but it's very evocative. The whole piece is, is so, so beautiful. Anyway, um, do you, do you want to talk a little bit about your experience? Um, you, I'm sure you've played it before, right? Um, yes, yes. Um, um, I think it was maybe one of the first Brahms works I heard as a as a child. Um, I was probably that age, like around six or seven, when I heard it for the first time. And um, I told my teacher that I really wanted to <laughs> play the Brahms for a sonata, and he was just kind of like, "Yeah, give it like ten more years, and then you can uh, approach the piece later on when you have a little more um, <laughs> control over your instrument." But anyway, I just uh, I do <laughs> love it so much. It's like you said calm and um, I think it's very introverted in a way and so mm -hmm. delicate if the raindrops mm -hmm. uh, that you hear in the, the piano part especially in the the last movement um, it's written just so 
beautifully to suit what each instrument does best naturally. I think the, the violin has these soaring, uh, beautiful melodic lines while the piano has uh, such rich and lush, you know, like a harmonic carpet <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, that creates this world and, uh, you know, just interwoven melodies. And it is just, just beautiful. I think I, um, what I love about Brahms is that he doesn't give any like metronomic markings and um, it gives you so much flexibility and space to, to just live in the moment um, of the music. And um, I think there was a story where Brahms was conducting one of the symphonies and the horn player went backstage after and was like, why did you take the tempo so fast today? And Brahms was like, I'm just in a good mood. You know, <laughs> so there's people just like living in that moment and playing according to to the moment. So that's that's what I enjoy most about about Brahms. Um, so yeah, I mean, I'm really that, yeah. How how cool! I mean, this is such a uh, such a wonderful anecdote because we we as performers always strive. Uh, we we break our heads. Um, no, I think that's a German idiom. But we we we, we think so much about. Um, what what would the composer do? What would the composer think? And how did he perceive this or she to perceive this and wrote it, write this? And and in the end, it's our read on what the composer wrote, and and it can change. It changes from concert to concert. I mean, and we're we're gonna perform several of these programs twice, and I know they will be different. And that's the joy of it. It's it's. Uh, you also want to be always be spontaneous. If you lock something down into one rigid kind of tempo or, you know, we only do it this and only that. Um, that so much of the music or what I feel music is gets lost because I think it's all about this personal connection. It's all about the spontaneity. It's about being in the moment, about being connected to your fellow musicians. And that's, I think, that's that's kind of the essence of chamber music that I always want to feel in the orchestra as well. And uh, I think that's, yeah, that's another another aspect of it. Well, I can't wait to hear you play the Brahms. It's yeah, gonna, I can't wait to, yeah. to play it too. <laughs> this is great. And uh, so the, the third piece in, on the program is Samuel Coleridge Taylor's uh, clarinet quintet. And Anton is going to be the, obviously the clarinetist on it. And uh, it's, I mean, what a piece. It's, uh, it, 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 do you want to talk a little bit about it? Before sure. I, I mean, also go into it. <laughs> it's, it's an incredible piece. And it's also a piece that I, I think is unfamiliar for a lot of people. It definitely was for me. I heard yeah. it yeah. once, maybe 15 years ago. Yeah. And I loved it at the time. Um, but now coming back to it and actually getting to know it and learning the part and seeing how everything interacts, it's amazing. It's, it's so complex, it's so rhythmic, even I want to say more so than Brahms because nothing is really where it seems in the beat. And he writes in these, um, you know, constantly changing meters. So for instance, the third movement is nine, eight, and then three, four. So you have kind yeah. of that, that conflict. Oh, um, yeah. And it's just, it's so vibrant. I love this piece so much and I oh, can't I, play it. I'm and excited. Then, the, I mean, the, sorry. Oh, I just want to say, and then probably the, the most beautiful part of the piece is the slow movement, which is just yeah. gorgeous, stunning. It's this endless sort of Dvorak melody, Brahmsian a little bit, but very unique to, to Coleridge Taylor. Oh, absolutely. But the funny thing is that that he heard the clarinet quintet that Brahms wrote, right? He right. heard it. And and um, so um, let me get the dates right. But I think um, uh, Brahms wrote it in... 1891, mm-hmm. the clarinet quintet, and then just uh, he heard it. Uh, Samuel Coleridge Taylor heard it and just immediately wrote his own clarinet quintet. Right. I was like, I'm going to like do this. 1895, too. I think. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so right, right after it, and uh, um, and you do hear some influences, but it's as you said, it's very much his own. And um, I would say, actually, rather than he was, he was more um, Samuel Coleridge Taylor was very. Um, he loved Dvorak. So uh, maybe more than Brahms, he kind of tended to um, this, this, uh, these, these dances, uh, also the, the kind of the, these, um, as you said, the eight, three, four, the kind of um, uh, folk dances that um, Dvorak always um, infused his music with as well. And um, I don't, it's, it's such a great, um, yeah, it's, it's, it has so many, 
um, folk idioms as well. Um, and it's just, I'm, I'm so surprised. I, as you said, it was also to me, I'm, as I said, I, I used to play clarinet too, but um, how could I have not known this piece? Is, is, and so I'm, so I'm so glad that um, Samuel College Taylor is getting this uh, renaissance now as well. Um, and, and I think it's such a, it's in, an incredible piece of music that everyone needs to hear. And uh, I think our audience members will love it as much as we do. Um, it's also, one, one thing that's interesting, he wrote it when he was 19. Oh my God. It's a student piece, and it's this huge, complete, complex. It's a it's a mature. Fully it's developed. a mature piece, absolutely. I mean that also that fourth movement. I mean it's just oh. it's so much fun, and it's very it's very orchestral. His whole writing is it's also it's it's not like the clarinet is the only melody, and then you just have you know the kind of uh, accompaniment on any. It's very much. I mean it's really another. Um, um flexible and it's another piece of work that that five people are just talking to each other and and having a real and conversation on eye level it's yeah that's great that's really cool um yes do you want to um i mean we're we're kind of about time before uh, we go into questions but uh do you guys have anything else to add um that we haven't really covered yet or talked about um so about the pieces. No, shall we go to the questions? Let's well, see. I have one thing. Oh, it's not yeah. related to music as much, but I'm really looking forward to getting on a jet ski. <laughs> <laughs> I don't jet know if I'm allowed to say that, but I really <laughs> want to get on a jet ski. <laughs> nice. Have you have you seen Loki yet? No, uh, the Disney Plus. Yeah, uh, the, the, this, the anyway. Sorry, this is a whole tangent, but this this guy, um, he really, really wants to go on jet skis. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, we have that in common. I can oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. Um, all right. Well, um, do I see any questions? Do you, any any questions that you have for well for me, but or for for all of our musicians here? Um, Okay, so I hear, do you look towards ethnomusicology and other global classical music tradition as well? Well, yes. I mean, um, so this is a this is a question from Ian Pomerantz. Um, I mean, the, yes, that I think the, the 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 question and something we talk about or think about also is um, what is classical music, and and for me. Um, it, the, the, the term has been um, way too much, um, basically what, what many people thought classical music is the kind of Western European classical tradition of music, but there's so much more. And I think, I mean, what is American classical music? Jazz, definitely. And there's so, there's so many aspects that um, people have kind of um, neglected, I think, when we talk about um, classical music. So the, yes, I, I like that you um, say global classical music. And, and actually, um, this is a topic that, that uh, Garrett McQueen, um, one of our, um, he's on our artistic leader, um, Commi leadership committee is that what we call it um anyway he's he's phenomenal and he talks um about also this this uh the the subject of classical music and decolonizing the term as well and uh on his on his uh podcast triloquy and um he, last week or well, last saturday it was just a few days ago oh my god um if you haven't seen it yet um i would uh encourage everyone to uh, rewatched that um, his presentation on the the first our first opening concert of, um, with Dorshak Nine as well and all the other American pieces that we have it's uh, it was a great presentation um, and he will do many more in the future but yes do I look towards ethnomusicology I mean yeah I I I, I research a lot and and um, I think I want to be well I want to perform great music and there's so much that. Um, if you only have a narrow mind towards uh, Western classical music tradition, that gets lost. So um, uh, absolutely, I want, um, want to also for, for um, uh, there's such a rich um, Native American community um, music tradition in Minnesota as well. And so um, one of their musicians is, um, is going to perform 
on the opening concert as well. And I'm so excited um, to hear that also, uh, as we talked about it in other other formats, uh, Dwarjak 9, obviously, he was very much inspired by the Native American and the spiritual music of, um, of North America. So um, that is a beautiful tie in as well before we play the, the symphony from, from the New World. Um, so, yes, uh, every and all music uh, I love and want to perform. Um, do you guys want to chime in with everything, anything? Um, well, I guess, uh, you know, there are different, you know, styles, depending on, uh, you know, uh, the, the composer and the area from which the composer, you know, um, resides or originates. Um, and especially like when we're in school, um, because so much of our education is focused on like the Western um, classical music canon. So like, you know, when you play WC, when you play French music, it needs to be like this. When you play dramatic music, it needs to be like this. Spanish music, it needs to be like this. Um, and then all the other stuff is just kind of like, you know, yeah, that that's over there. And that that's part of, you know, um, I, I guess this season um, with Lake Area, I think they do a really good job in general of having like eclectic and um, just, uh, a wide array of programming, but I was especially mm -hmm. impressed this year with the lineup that they had. They cover so much ground, um, just music and you know musical influences from across the world. Mm -hmm. And I think it really says Thanks, a lot man. about the um, trust and um, quite frankly, the influence that you know the artistic leadership at the Lakes area um, music festival has with its community um and i you know this is kind of kind of a, a little spiel but i wish a lot more arts organizations would you know you know take 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 the uh take a cue that it, it doesn't matter like if you're if you have a rapport with your community and they trust the curatorship that you present to them you really can expose people um, to such a wide array of music. And it doesn't just have to be the Brahms and the Beethoven. And, and that music is great. Like I love playing, I love playing, you know, those aforementioned composers, but sometimes I get to the point where I'm like, if I have to play this dang Beethoven five, one more freaking time, you know? Like there's just, especially when you know, like Anton talking about the Coleridge Taylor. Um, I played one of his, um, um, I don't know if you call it a symphony. I'm trying to remember the name of it. I played it uh, with a group in London. Um, is it the ago. Is it the Hiawatha? No, the, no, not the, these are kind of the, his most famous the cantatas. Yeah, um, the and and I, it's going to hit me when we get off of this. Maybe ballade. There's a he wrote a great ballad. <sighs> and, sorry, it doesn't. No, and watch as soon as we get off the Zoom, I'm going to remember what it was. But I just remember even at that time, just being like, kind of annoyed, like, why don't, why have I never played this music? And even more than that, why did I not even know this was a thing? Mm -hmm. I know Beethoven and Brahms and Mozart and Haydn and all of those composers, you know, up, down, sideways, left, right. But there's just all this music of, you know, contemporary composers, living composers that never gets a chance. Yeah. Um, and even composers, you know, who were long gone, who for a myriad of reasons that, you know, I, I think Garrett McQueen, like you said in Garrett McQueen's talk, <laughs> it hits on a lot of why those people haven't been featured. But anyway, um, I, I'm just really glad to be a part of um, a festival and an experience that really, um, you know, is presenting its audience with just like a smorgasbord of different composers, different musical influences, different idiomatic um, compositional methods, et cetera, et cetera. And I'm just, it, you know, that that's probably the biggest reason I'm excited to be back at Lakes Area. I mean, besides like seeing people and, you know, um, get, getting to be around people and like getting back to normal, um, whatever that is mm -hmm. now. Um, it, it's just, it, it, it's really amazing. And I, it, I, I just don't get to experience that that often because where I play, I mean, it's, you know, and I don't think I'm speaking out of turn, but if you were to go and look at the Pacific Symphonies, 
um, programming. It's very cookie cutter in the box, um, which, you know, well, I, I, the orchestra is in Orange County. It's a little bit more of a conservative county, um, but it's frustrating because you go right up the street to LA Phil and the stuff they're doing, geez, it's just all over the map, very kind of similar to Lakes area in that regard. So I just, for anyone watching who has influence is on a board, like just take a chance for goodness sakes. Like it, it really, I'm just so excited to see how people respond mm -hmm. um, to this uh, combination and amalgamation of programming. Yeah. Sorry, Scott. Um, here, did you have another question? No, I agree completely, Adedigi, and 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 I'm very well. I'm yeah, I'm very proud and happy of what we kind of put together um, uh, for the season. It's oh, it's just incredible repertoire, and um, I if, I'm excited about every single piece, and I can't wait to perform it. I can't wait to work on it. So and and present it and have everyone. Uh, be part of that also um, part of the oh my god I'm so sorry I, I'm in Aspen and I don't know why anyway maybe this is a good time to mute myself um, okay so do we have any more questions I don't think I see any okay um, I'm good thank oh we got extended here, sorry. Okay, um, can you come back in 10 minutes? Yeah, I mean, thank you. <laughs> I'm so sorry, that's all right. Uh, <laughs> it happens. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right, if we don't have any more questions, then uh, I'm just uh, left to say thank you so much, Yunus, Anton, and Adedeji for joining us today. Um, it's been great just to chat and to see you guys again. And I hope uh, everyone in the audience kind of got the feeling of, of getting to know you better. Um, and, and I hope they all come to the concert and also all the other concerts and see you perform, see you on stage and recognize you. And uh, please do come say hi. Uh, and, and yeah, we're always happy to uh, be in contact and in touch and in conversation with uh, our audiences, obviously. So very excited for this season. Thank you so much for joining us here on Facebook and on Zoom. Uh, just to remember, this concert is on Wednesday, uh, August 11th uh, at 7.30 in the Tornstrom Auditorium uh, called Rain and Red Clay. And uh, yeah, so excited for it. Hope to see you there and throughout Brainerd throughout the season. All right. Bye-bye, everyone.